A lot of miniature wargamers have uh, this thing. It's called the pile of shame. I don't know if more makers have it, but it's it's a it's a closet I, or area of uh, area. I have, of, an, I have an area of you, outstanding that, projects. <laughs> outstanding project. <laughs> What's up, Plastic Addicts? Welcome back to the Sci-Fi Model Podcast presented by Jason's Model Shop, the fastest growing sci-fi modeling podcast on the internet. I'm your host, Jason C. Marshall, and if this is your first time here, the Sci-Fi Model Podcast is your source for everything sci-fi model making, including pop culture subjects, movies and TV, and a little bit of miniature wargaming. In the last episode, I spoke with my good friend, uh, Ken Bowman, and we talked a lot about uh, our Wargaming Minis sci-fi models. And despite what some gatekeepers may see, fundamentally, yes, they fit the mold, as it were. Uh, But we had a fairly long conversation. We kind of just, as friends, we just chatted a bit, and we end up talking about a couple other things, uh, primarily imposter syndrome. We touched on the topic of motivation, uh, as I had discussed before, because it it is a a thing that exists that that no one's really talking about. And then we got into 3D printing, which I'm wading into. Ken has more experience. Obviously, other people we know have much, much more experience. But having said all that, uh, what do you say we get into it? I, yes, I do suffer from uh, imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. I, I totally do. And I think it just, you know, it's it's things that happen to you when you're a kid, right? But I don't, I'm confident enough in my painting that if somebody pushed me hard enough, I would paint something for them. Mm-hmm. But at the same point in time, it's it, not it, something I want to do on a regular basis because. Yeah, the, the, the deal has to be right. Yeah. And I mean, even even though I didn't want to paint these ones for for my friend, you know, he really mm-hmm. wanted to get in the game, and he's just like, "No, I really want you to do this." And yada yada yada. He eventually bent it because he's like, "Okay, this is the color scheme I want." And I started thinking mm-hmm. about it. I'm like, "Okay, well, that's actually relatively easy for me to produce." So I did it, and I did it in a really quick amount of time because it was very surprisingly easy to do. Right. You know, it was a very simplistic color scheme that he wanted, and and. I just did them up. Mechs don't take that long to paint. Like a mm-hmm. mech would probably take me probably two hours to do in, in high yeah. detail. Um, and then, and, and like, especially if you keep the paint scheme fairly simplistic, I'm not super good at freehand right now. That's one of mm-hmm. those skill sets that I want to work on, but um, you know, I do what I can. There is um it's two things. I also suffer. I suffer from imposter syndrome for a long time until I'm not going to say who or whom because it was multiple people, but you know, watching various, let's say political commentators from both spectrums, mostly from the right, just saying stuff that is, you know, not true, but they're just saying it and people are eating it up. I'm like, well, shit, I only deal in facts. Why the hell, why am I holding myself back if I don't think I'm good enough or people would, you know, and it was just kind of this, this, this aha moment, like, well, shit. And yeah, there's always going to be someone better than you. And I've got another friend who, uh, who makes some great models, but he, uh, he really, imposter syndrome really hits him, so he won't do anything for anyone else. I'm like, dude, I could get you a ton of work. Because you know USA clients, I'm like I can't do them. I'll send them to you, but yeah, you won't. Uh, well, you what about what about a here's he's like, dude, Jason, what about a collab? Like, would he be more willing to do it if you collaborated with him and he facilitated? He helped you facilitate the sale in the states, but you provided some, you know, sort of pizzazz that made him believe. Mm-hmm. Like, so like you do something incredibly small. Right? Mm-hmm. And he does most of the work, and I'm not trying to trick you into do it, trick him into doing it, but like, yeah. you know, to to kind of encourage him, like, no, I don't, I don't think he'll go for it. But also because the um, there's a whole thing. My the last, uh, uh, the second to last episode before this one was about motivation, and you know, lack it of it, and, and, and what to do. It and said so he goes. he's also been suffering from a lack of motivation. Now I get that because 
you know, you work hard all day, you get home and you, know, you kind of got nothing left. I mean, that's, that's what our society does. It, it chews you up. So, so here's my trick for motivation. So, and, and I'm, I'm bad for this, right? Mm. I'll go through stints where I put 30 minutes a day into my minis, right? Summer is a busy time for me, so I haven't been painting at all. And mm -hmm. Starfield just got released. So yeah, I've so you're a little occupied. Been a little sidetracked, but eventually I'm going to be finishing off these Karmstar units. I, I'm in no rush mm -hmm. for these guys mm -hmm. to be done. And to be honest with you, if I have no interest in painting these guys, I'm going to go pick up something. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, this guy, he was a one off. I don't even collect this army. <laughs> I just did him because I wanted to. Yeah. And it, it wasn't because it was because I was sick of painting a thousand of these. Yeah, you need to change. And these guys are super easy to paint. These mm -hmm. guys are the most simple paint design. These are the easiest army to paint in the entire game. Mm -hmm. And the 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 tank is probably one of the hardest ones because all the detail. Here's the thing. If you're if you want to keep motivation. And, and, and modeling is your thing. Try skipping to a different genre for a model mm -hmm. and then going back to it. You never know. I absolutely love World War II planes. I just don't want to go to the store and buy specific color paints because I have to paint the interior of the color the same color that they painted all aircraft in World War II. Yeah. Right? Would I love to build my three P-51? Yeah, and one day I will. I'm mm -hmm. just not interested in doing it right now. That's but true. if the... I were to um, go grab uh, mini soldiers or whatever from the from the French Revolution, uh, the yeah, the French Revolution mm -hmm. yeah. or or anything like that, um, or or English, uh, uh, British colonial uh, colonial uh, redcoats, right, and paint mm -hmm. them up just honestly for shits and giggles. Then and it, it keeps me painting and it keeps me on top of my game, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you are a modeler and you that's what you love to do and you have no interest in doing it, you can. There, it's okay to take a break. Just um, what is it? Uh, there's a very very well known miniature war miniature war gaming um, icon that I watch all the time, and he his name is um, <sighs> sorry. Just give me a second. Mm -hmm. Edit this. Oh, yeah. He just released a video. I'm not going to say who because mm -hmm. you know because you can't remember because I can't remember. <laughs> but I just watched his video mm -hmm. and I watch his videos all the time. And and so he, what he says is if you have burnout because of miniature work, like if you're if you have paint burnout and you need to take a break, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Just set a date in which you're going to come back. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and 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 what and one of his solutions could be if he's sick and tired of painting the same stuff over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe he could try picking up a different model kit that might interest him. Like everybody has multiple interests. You can't just be interested in Star Trek models. You have yeah. to, you know, you have inter other interests. We were just talking about model railroad. You know what? Yeah. Pick up a fucking locomotive and, and just put yeah. real and make it look real. Right, the, uh, and just buy a track and mm -hmm. stick it on a wooden plaque. Look, I did this. Holy shit! And well, if that, that keeps you, you, you inspired you, to do the you work, can do a, you can do a static shelf model of right. a railroad. It doesn't have yeah. to be operational. Um, yeah, but, when when I did when I did the the last episode on on motivation, I didn't focus so much on burnout. But I get what you're saying, and that's I always have multiple. I always have multiples on the go, so I can switch off. I tend to focus more on. The motivation itself, because there's a there's a misconception that motivation leaves action, and that is sometimes true. But you got to remember that action leads to motivation. Yep. Just so, just start something, and so, once you get once you get settled and kind of doing it, then the rest will flow naturally. And if it doesn't, then you take a break. One thing that inspires me is like I'm working on a table for Battletech. Mm -hmm. So my goal every paycheck is to buy one terrain set every paycheck. Because mm -hmm. they're 20, 20 euros, right? The guys mm -hmm. from Europe, right? So it works out to be like 50 bucks a terrain set. But I mean, these are massive chunks of terrain. Like I yeah. bought an aerospace, um, uh, what is it? An aerospace um, airport. Mm -hmm. Right, a spaceport for fifty dollars Canadian. Right? Yeah, you can't 
buy that if you were buying the physical model, right? And then I just 3D printed on my Ender 3. You know, yeah, okay, it's got the lines in it, but I'm going to paint it and it's just terrain. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, doesn't need to look spectacular. What needs to look spectacular is the miniatures on the, on the, on the, on the table, right? Mm -hmm. It's just there to be a place marker. So, you know, there's, there's, those kind of inspirations, right? Mm -hmm. And and you know what's going to be really daunting is when I have to paint it all because it's going to be like, oh my god! Oh. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, I need a quick way to paint all this, yeah. Right? Or it's just going to be black plastic sitting on my table, <laughs> right? Uh, or primed plastic sitting on my table, right? So there, okay. that's another way that why I could lead to burnout. A lot of a lot of miniature war gamers have uh, this thing. It's called the pile of shame. I don't know if model makers have it, but it's it's a it's a closet I, or area of uh area I, have, of, I have an area of you, outstanding that, projects <laughs> outstanding projects so <laughs> and, and i don't and i don't mean i don't mean like fantastic <laughs> that so i've actually um been pretty good to myself so i have blood the box set of blood bowl um an entire tau army um mm. like 16 lances of mechs um an entire box set for black seas uh and maybe about 20 models or so for warhammer 40k that i need to do so my pile of shame is actually fairly small i'm i'm gonna tell you about my pile of shame it is and i gotta say this i gotta qualify this first my customer florida man has been exceedingly cool because i am not just behind on his 350 refit i am months behind on 350 one because i had to restart it um is that the one that you uh, are 3d printing parts for uh yeah so that was the other Sweet. benefit though as it turns out that waiting like taking this break allowed me to find things that didn't exist for me when i started the build so there's a bunch of 3d printed parts and accessories i can add moving forward i can add to this to actually step it up so there's a benefit there but this is a challenging model and i need constant breaks to step away from it Okay. Because there's so many steps involved and there's so much complex lighting in it. So he's been super cool um, about my my dawdling pace. No, but I'm it comes back to what like you said, you know, you gotta if if, if you're not feeling it, you sometimes you gotta step away from it because there are times if you force it, it's just gonna not be good. Yeah. If he you know what, he's probably the type of client that would rather you do a good job. Mm -hmm. then then uh rush through it yeah. you know you pay for t time and time and money or, or what it takes to to produce good quality mm -hmm. products right yeah um, and here's the thing he's he's kind of in rather than one one payment he's doing it he's doing it in payments so i haven't asked him for any money for you know until i get to you know a fr a further further down the line i'm not like hold on to your money until i get this you know near completed yeah. Yeah, no, no, that makes sense. But that's that's more of a that's like a, okay. So I had a project for film. It was a paintball documentary. I shot the entire thing myself. You know, um, that took me a while to finish because mm -hmm. it was a <laughs> daunting task. I follow. I had five tournaments in which I followed hours it, and it, hours it, and, and I hours followed of a team around for four days in their entirety from the time we woke up to sleep. So I had not hours, tens of hours to watch through mm -hmm. and pick out shots and get those moments and stuff like that. Luckily I have a good memory. So I remembered, you know, a lot of the key moments and stuff like that. And I, and I got a lot of it done. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I got paid for the project, but it was, it was daunting. It was a, it was a hell of a task. Some of the films that I've edited, they were all very daunting, and they all took the time. But you know, when I was done the project, I was super super happy with what I did. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and it's funny because one thing I never had that imposter complex on was my video production or my uh, my video editing because I was nice. fairly confident in my skills. Right then, uh, you know. The and, and and then with my miniature painting, it's not because I doubt my skills, it's because I just don't want to, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, I I don't want to have to, I would like to, to do a few, you know, but I would rather do a piece and then sell that piece as a final piece, yeah, 
then yeah, have yeah, somebody be like, yeah, oh, I bought this model. You one and, yep. Yeah. You know, like yeah, no, build the that. model to your specifications, how you like it, and then sell it on eBay or sell it to a friend or whatever. Like yeah. that's that to me is a lot more appealing. Than, yeah, I know. I don't know a number of modelers who do that. They just build and build and post. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's mm-hmm. that's pretty dope. I want to talk about one more thing. We kind of just kind of we won't get too too deep in it because it's such a big subject. Before we kind of uh, wrap up, so 3D printing, mm-hmm. 3D printing. Uh, I've been posting my stuff. It's been about what three four weeks since I've been set up and kind of. Bit of a steep learning curve and figuring out things like, uh, like you said, supports, which is a bit. Hey, of a... You've been learning the easier form of three D printing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the SLA versus the uh, versus the extrusion, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's something I was always interested in, but one waiting and one, I said to you, waiting until the cost came down. That was a big one. The quality was was good enough. Um. So, but then I, the what was holding me back was like, what the hell do I buy? What what equipment do I buy? And it was when you were like, hey, check out my my setup, that it kind of, it kind of crystallized. Like, okay, I un- now I understand the different types and the different steps. All right, I'm going to take you on a long journey, my friends. Okay. All right, everyone, <laughs> buckle in, buckle in. So because of Warhammer and uh, the fact that I um, that armager that I showed you is. One of my favorite models. I love the uh, Imperial Knights. Honestly, if I could have a full Imperial Knight army, in fact, one day I will have a full Imperial Knight army. Mm-hmm. When I get bored of BattleTech, I guarantee you, if I have a little extra cash, I'm probably going to buy a knight and just build that army because I just love giant fucking robots. Even yeah, if they're I, I, gothic, even if they're they're gothic robots, I just fucking love giant robots, giant stompy things with big guns. <laughs> Yes! Yes! Right? Yeah. But there's so much like with the kit you get, there's only so much you can do. Like you can magnetize it so you can move the arms, you can buy kits so that, you know, like if you buy the biggest G- Games Workshop kit for 40k, you can get all of the guns available to all of the units. There's different heads you can use, right? You can magnetize all them so you can mm-hmm. swap them out. You can You can diversify a unit. But if you want to make a custom night house, actually, there is one. Um, uh, I'm going to plug Anvil of War. There's one, my favorite video that we absolutely did. And here's how we came about it I saw this guy's night, all right, at a Warhammer 40K tournament. And I'm just like, my words to the, to the judge at the painting competition was, holy fuck, who did this night? Uh-huh. And he's like, Oh, that's this guy. So I went over and I talked to him. I said, look, man, I really love your army. I love the way it's painted. I love the way it looks. I think it's so unique. Um, We need to have you on our channel, Mm -hmm. right? And we did because we had a series called Army Showcase in which we had – we showcased our own armies, but um, this was the one time that I was able to pull somebody else in from the community and be like, yo, I need you to come in and talk about your army. He brought it in. It was this Celtic – style wood elf style um imperial knight collection and oh my god it was awesome (laughs) right so it got me thinking like how much customizability is there to these kits right because one of the beautiful thing about mini war gaming especially warhammer and stuff like that is the universe is so big right you can literally have anything you can have worlds where you know your night house is stuck in the in the in the in the 16th century right so everybody Mm. else is sword shield and bow and arrow right like you've got these giant ancient robots that can barely be maintained right that settle battles for them right or defend the planet you know with these guns that haven't been able to maintain being maintained for 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 thousands of years right Mm -hmm. that's how ancient these machines are um so you could literally have anything right um for an army now what are the customizable options right and that's where i started looking into 3d printing because it's like okay Mm -hmm. i have these necrons there's not really a whole lot i can do with them to kit bash them i want to make some unique and interesting characters because this uh army is uh you know uh 60 million years old you know they've Mm -hmm. they've got some interesting stuff going on so I started looking at kit bashing options, which led me to um, 
different websites and, and looking at options. And, and yeah, I was like, okay, well, I have to pay for these. That's cool. But oh, I need to get these 3D printed. All right, cool. So what's 3D printing all about? So I started looking into it. Plus terrain too. Like, uh, mm -hmm. so uh, there's a lot of uh, really cool terrain that you need for Warhammer or mm -hmm. BattleTech or whatever. It doesn't matter what war game you're playing. You, you need terrain, right? Because part yeah. of the, you know, uh, thing. Because you're not going to have like, it's not like 18th century battles. You're just going to have two armies standing in a line in, you know, firing muskets at each other yeah. and then hoping, you know, one side falls down first. That kind of warfare is boring as shit. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's entertaining to somebody if, if you're into historical battles, but, you know, it's, uh, you don't play war games like that. I, I never played paintball like that. I think that'd be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but so, You've you've got to have cover for these units. So trees, buildings, rubble, rocks, you know, natural things, and, and you either have to model them or uh 3D print them, which mm -hmm. is a lot easier to do. So I started looking into both forms of 3D printing. Now I was exposed to FDM 3D printing, which is the filament style, mm -hmm. uh 3D printing through paintball, right? So okay. making accessories for paintball guns and airsoft guns, especially and stuff like that. Actually, I have a, a paintball gun. That that has some three D printed parts on it, and they are phenomenal. They look, they oh, make nice. it look so sick. It's not even <laughs> funny. Everybody that sees my marker on the field is like, "Holy crap! Where did you get that?" And I'm like, "I three D printed it. I three D printed it." They're like, "Oh my god, that's sick!" And I get it. Because mm -hmm. that's how we are yep. in this sport. Um, so uh, I I kind of knew a little bit about. FDM 3D printing, which I've been exposed to for a longer period of time. One of the computer stores I was working with had, had a 3D printer and they were dabbling mm -hmm. with it. So I was always kind of interested in it. And I understand, you know, it's very based on on, on CAD style uh, directional systems. So X, Y axis and Z axis right. and stuff like that. It's, um, you know, and so I started learning about it. I was interested in it. I started learning learning about it, and I've been learning about it for a while. So uh, I learned all I could about uh, FDM style printers, and I was like, "Yeah, okay, those are cool, but you don't get the kind of detail you need." All right, and then there was this new stuff coming out. There's a uh, uh, the uh, two different acronyms for it. SLA is the single is the laser, um, and then there's DLP. Um, anyways, it's uh, the DLM. It's the it's the monochromatic screen. It's the type that you have. It's it, right. the plate comes down, it exposes mm -hmm. it, rips it off the plate, and then keeps doing yeah. the process over again. So, um, I've been looking into that for about a year, um, watching as many YouTube channels as I possibly could. Be like, okay, I, I really want to get into this because I want to be able to do miniature uh, parts like. Uh, I want to be able to do I, I wasn't necessarily in it for like printing entire miniatures i was more or less wanting to augment ones i already had or mm -hmm. buy a kit and then add this part to it yeah. right which people do a lot um and there's some really good artists out there that can totally blow gw out of the water when it comes to their uh when it comes right. to stuff um so you've got um the two competing technologies um both have their merits and and i was learning all about it so i spent about a year doing it and i've talked to a few people who are into 3d printing and they're like oh well you know getting arming myself with information much like the conversations that you and i, I have had you know i i come by and i come across as knowledgeable because i spent a lot of time yep. researching this before i dove in because it's like okay well i'm the only person i know with any of this equipment so i mm -hmm. want to know what i'm talking about and I'm like that with anything. I was like that with film and video or before I bought anything, I always wanted to know as much as I could about it so I could get the most out of it. I'm a novice when it comes to 3D printing. <laughs> I know people who know way more about this oh, yeah. than I do, right? And can yeah. push the same printer I have to get twice the detail out of it. I just choose not to because mm -hmm. there's no need for it for me. I'm not doing anything at uh, much larger of a scale than uh, 28 millimeter, right? Yeah. So, and at that, uh, 4k printer gives you pretty freaking good detail now um a lot of a lot of the newer printers so you can get up to a 12k printer a lot of the newer printers um you can they will give you the same if not more detail but it'll look smoother right right like if you've noticed uh even on 
um, Adam Savage just did the, the video for Starfield, right? Like mm-hmm. if you see the model, the, the four film model that they created, you can see the mold, the, the, the 3D printing lines, right, on the model, yep. which it, so what? You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's a fucking beautiful model. Right? Yes, and 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 this guy is, is 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 um an amazing personality when it comes to 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 that kind of stuff, right? He's a creator, so um he's one of those people that like I you know could do no wrong in my mind. Yep, <laughs> right. Well, so, anyways, they, they, they do they do the they do the the uh, the Starfield. Uh, uh, first ship, the uh, Frontier. Yep. Um, but you can see the, the the lines from 3D printing. Whereas with a 12K printer, you honestly wouldn't get that. It would mm-hmm. look smooth because you're dealing with like um, one. I think it's like 0.18 microns or something like that of of level thickness, right? Like that's right. how far it'll go down to. Mm-hmm. So it's very very smooth. Um, anyway, so I'm kind of getting kind of sidetracked. I, I spent a year learning about these printers and I finally decided to dive in because I'm like, okay, I was getting into Battletech. I bought the first two box sets and I'm like, sweet, they've got all these mechs out, but they don't have any of the tanks. One of the beautiful things about Battletech is the other vehicles. So adding yeah. tanks, adding helicopters, having that diversity when you're in the middle of a battle because it's all very intricately working together, right? And they all communicate. That's the beautiful thing. On the battle, right. on the battlefield, tanks can communicate with mechs and it's just there's tactics that I could explain to you that you wouldn't understand unless you mm-hmm. play the game. Right? And they're they're based on real world military tactics, right? So, um uh you know, and by adding those units to the game, you're adding so much more it's like you're opening a door in this game that you never would have had before so i Mm. bought a 3d printer to be able to gain access to those units to play a game and i was like okay sweet i'm gonna print terrain i'm gonna do this and i mean the printer i bought i bought the uh any cubic any cubic 4k mono x Mm -hmm. or 4k uh mono Photon mono. Anyways, the, mm-hmm. the name doesn't matter. It's a 3D printer. It's a 4K 3D printer. I bought some resin and I started printing with it. I'm like, wow, these are amazing, right? So I started printing them and mm-hmm. playing with them. A lot of the differences I found, like, so resin printing is super easy once you get the machine set up and printing. Um, it's fairly foolproof. You know, once you learn what you need to learn, you need to learn supporting uh, your model. Yep. You need to learn yes, supporting. You, you need to learn how to orient it. You know what I mean? And that was 90% of my year learning how this worked was learning that stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I got this stuff, I wasn't disappointed with, oh shit, my models aren't turning out. They're failing. Right. Yeah. Because I learned a lot about. Yeah. I do a lot, I do a lot of test prints. Right. Whereas I didn't have to. And it was more because I took the time to learn how to do mm-hmm. that stuff. And I and I understand the process of what's happening when this stuff fails or when this like, it, oh, this part failed here. And I that's still, actually have, an I still have prints that fail. That's actually an interesting topic because I was thinking about that as I was because I said I'm I jumped in, I'm more of a trial and error printer. Yeah. And I was thinking about that just the other day. I'm like, okay, so these prints failed. But I do need to go and do the research. I don't know why. I can't diagnose why they failed because I don't know what the printer ninety percent of it is because. So when the printer, the printer is doing two things. The printer comes down and it creates. Mm-hmm. It leaves a thin layer of resin between it and the, the the, and the plate, the, the filament the screen. Yeah, the, the screen, and then it exposes it. So it's mm-hmm. basically just a camera opening a shutter and it exposes mm-hmm. it to a picture, and then it has to peel that off. Right, so if at any point in that process, you know the resin peels away from the build plate, mm-hmm. or um, you know there's any forces on that freshly cured, freshly semi cured resin. Yes, yeah, semi cured. Yeah, right. It's still flexible, so it as it's being pulled off of that sheet, right? Even if it's slow, it, it can it can get warped, right? Yep. And and it's a problem. It's especially a problem with larger prints. Right. 
I'm not quite at the level where I can like 100% diagnose everything that's wrong, but I understand where I went wrong with certain things. Like I just printed an aerospace uh, civilian ship for terrain mm -hmm. on my um, on my resin printer the other day, and there's one part that keeps failing, and it keeps failing because of that problem. So I have to change the orientation. I I, I haven't printed another one because I ran out of resin. Mm -hmm. I printed two of them, and they both failed the same way. The first time I added supports to try and strengthen mm -hmm. the uh, the bond, right? Because I'm like, okay, well, the supports must be, you know what I mean? But like, I'm there and I understand mm -hmm. why it's failing. But at the same point in time, mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, so I have to print another one, wait another three hours. All right, cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to change it's... the orientation. And, 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 and so I'm thinking about these things while I'm doing it. I could just as easily print it on my FDM printer, but because it's a it's a it's a moving part, like it's a vehicle, I'm like, okay, well, you know, I will count that a little bit, a little bit higher detail. Yeah. Um, I actually switched over. So on your so when I started, I was just using the AnyCubic software for supporting and whatnot. Lychee so is better. But on your recommendation, I switch over to Lychee because it gives me more options for making for for manually putting supports, searching for yeah. islands. There's there's so many different softwares out there, man. Um, I recommend Lychee because that's what I learned. I mm -hmm. use the any, any cubic software. It's great, mm -hmm. but it's limited. Yes. Lychee is amazing for 3D printing with resin, and it sucks for 3D printing with filament. Uh, okay. Right? Didn't so it's, it's, it's lacking far behind with filaments. Really? Because um, like, I spent a month trying to figure out why well, my prints kept doing weird things and stuff like that with my FDM printer. Mm -hmm. So FDM is a whole different beast. Yeah. Um, so FDM, I got into, I got my resin printer because I'm like, okay, well, I want to be able to print units and augments for these models, right? So, you know, I had some successes and some failures. I had weird bubbles. You know, I learned and I, and I did the same thing. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I do test prints or I have prints that fail, but more yeah. often than not, I have successful prints. <clears throat> um, you know, since I updated my computer, I've been having more failed prints, but I have a feeling it's because I haven't gone through, like, I, I haven't taken the time to really go through and reset up the printer. I'm just using right. Lychee's default settings. Right. Um, it's my own laziness, to be honest <laughs> with you. Whereas, and, and the whole the reason why I haven't really bothered to do it is because, like, I've been doing a lot of printing on my uh, FDM printer lately because I've been working on terrain, not units. Yeah. Uh, so... I don't need as much detail. I just need to print a big thing. Oh, right? yeah, sure. yeah. So like where you would use an FDM printer would be great for if you needed to make a base or a mount mm -hmm. for something that doesn't need to be really detailed, can afford to look a little bit, you know, you can see the layer lines or whatever. Like you can get 3D printers. You can get some newer 3D printers that are, you know, will do an amazing job, but you're still going to see those layer lines. And people tend to not really mind anymore mm -hmm. about 3D printed layer lines. Now, you're not going to use that on your model itself, but like say you needed a structural element to hold wiring in place yeah. or, you know, um, have like a, a battery, in, internal battery system set up so that you can like put it up into the base or anything. You can 3D print all that stuff. You can even design that thing in CAD if you want. Yeah. Right? Um and uh, like the the beauty of it is you can like with my setup I, I'm good because I can do whatever I want with what I'm doing right if I if I want to change what I'm doing I might have to upgrade my printers but for now I'm mm -hmm. good um, so the resin printing is a lot of materials handling. Because the resin is toxic, you, yeah. you can't expose it to light. You know, um, it creates fumes and stuff like that. So, like right now, I have my setup. I don't. You remember my setup? I have my setup encased in a Mastercraft steel mm -hmm. um, setup. Like it doesn't smell right. And and my plan this winter is to actually go to Princess Auto and do a venting system yeah. from inside to out to my window, just like my, um, you know. Uh, so that I don't have to worry about fumes because I'm planning on experimenting with some resins over the winter because I work yep. in construction. I'm going to be on break and I'm going to have the time to do so. So I'm going to experiment with different resins. So I'm going to need to get a, a venting system. Um, one of the biggest mistakes you can make in resin printing is misunderstanding the toxic stuff you're working with, right? Mm -hmm. um, you work in construction just like I do. You deal with shit that can kill you if you use it the same way and not properly over years, 
right? Yep. Resin will might not affect you right away, but eventually you're going to build up some sort of a, a, an allergic reaction to it. And it's a chemical burn. It can mm -hmm. seriously hurt you. Not to mention the sheer fact that that plate going down into the resin and ripping it up mm -hmm. is disturbing the molecules in that resin so the air quality in the room goes down. Now, you can mm -hmm. get those carbon filters, but they just do the smell. Right. There's a few videos out there that prove that they don't really do much for the for the air quality in the room. So right. ventilation is a huge factor. Right. Um, so there's a few things that you have to think of when you're dealing with resin 3D printing versus FDM printing. FDM printing is perfectly fine if you're dealing with PLA. If you're mm -hmm. dealing with ABS, then you need to consider getting an enclosure and venting it. Yeah. Um, so like it's just a matter of understanding the materials you're working with and the processes that are going on resin printing is so much easier to deal with because oh, you're yeah. going to get high quality prints they will be brittle you'll get high quality prints um you got to learn a little bit about exposing the resin um especially if you're working with clear resin mm -hmm. um like i have a um a custom flight stand set that i made out of clear resin and this one's a little bit more opaque because what I had to do was I had to learn, okay, well, you know, 3D printed base, 3D printed uh, um, acrylic style mm -hmm. resin. So it's a clear resin. Uh, they will yellow over yes. time. Because uh, my, every time... My experience, my experience already, they will yellow very fast. They do, because every time you take them out, like you're working in a very window-heavy mm -hmm. environment. Each time you pull that thing out of a non-UV protected area, mm -hmm. it's exposed. Yeah. So it's consistently getting more and more and more exposed uh, to the point where eventually it's going to get so yellow, it's going to crack, and it's just going to be brittle as crap, right? Yeah. So what you have to do is you get a clear acrylic sealer or acrylic enamel, mm -hmm. enamel sealer, and you seal that, it'll stop that process from happening. Yeah, yeah. So there's so all for, those... Yeah, for me, so for me to do, I've already learned for clear, I've got to do it. It's basically a nighttime, nighttime job for me. Yep. And then as soon as it's done, as soon as it's cured, you clear coat it. Yep. Um, it's, uh, and, and, you know, since I learned that I haven't had a problem with it, but it took me, you know, a little bit. I'm like, okay, why am I having this problem? Okay. So like 3d printing in itself is a completely different hobby. Like you're, you're taking a hobby and then you're adding another hobby on top of it to do more things with this hobby. Yeah. Right. Um, so that covers resin printing. Uh, <laughs> why I got a filament printer is because I'm insane and wanted to put myself way more in debt. But I wanted to build <laughs> terrain, right? Well, okay. Well, that's what I and, said. And, you need, for 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 your bigger piece, you got you need a filament for bigger pieces. You don't need it, right? Because you can buy resin printers that will do larger pieces. Like my buddy has a resin printer; it costs him like fifteen hundred bucks. That mm -hmm. has the, a plate that's you know this yeah. big. That's a pretty big piece of resin. Mm -hmm. Problem is, resin is harder to print larger pieces yes. right? if you don't know what you're doing. And I'm still pretty novice when it comes to 3D printing because I'm learning lots here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure if I keep having parts fail that are large, I'll understand why. Like, I mean, oh, I yeah. have one large unit that keeps failing, but it's also a huge chunk of resin, and I'm also maxing out my, my printer at the yeah. same point in time. So it's kind of... I found okay. that mine does not does not like to be pushed to the limit <laughs> yeah no they don't they don't mm. they don't like to be pushed to the limit and um larger projects need way more support um mm -hmm. and they need to be oriented differently and they need to be um you need to realize that resin will warp so before you cure it you need to fix the warping mm. and then cure it or you know fix the warping and cure it while you fixed it and stuff like that. So there's there's a lot. Yeah. Plus, um, you know, uh, some resins will shrink, and, and you got all kinds of stuff. So for larger stuff, stuff that doesn't need to be as detailed, stuff that's like uh, a huge terrain piece, I'll use my FDM printer or mm -hmm. tools. Tools. Tools are perfect. This handle here is three D printed, right? Yeah. Excuse exactly. me. Yeah. I'm not touching my model while I'm print mm -hmm. painting it now. I'm I'm using this handle, right? These things cost like twenty bucks a piece. I have a Games Workshop one that mm -hmm. cost me like fifteen bucks. And how much does it for, cost to print it? 
two dollars yeah. and i have and and here i'll show you i have mm -hmm. a whole item a multi, plus, a multi stand and plus i can print more if i need to right i have i could print as many as i mm -hmm. want um, yeah, it, there's a freedom there's a freedom to it oh i've got paint uh little like so i've got stuff to hold my paint depending on the mm -hmm. size of paint model i've got things over here to hold my paint i i do projects for for buddies just to, to make a little extra cash on the side like i mm -hmm. can it's it's when something goes wrong with it it's a lot more technical because you're dealing with mechanical parts that yeah. can fail um you know so the failure points on an fdm printer are a lot more than the failure points on a sla printer or a dl dlm printer mm -hmm. um the because you're dealing with servo you're dealing with one two three servos plus your extruder servo plus your heat element plus your nozzle plus the filament itself can have imperfections in it plus the plate has to move back and forth plus plus yeah. plus, plus 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 right it's a mechanical process that has multiple failing points resin printer has less failing points but it has a lot more chemicals uh, yeah. and materials handing points to it right so like depends on what you're looking for um so i find myself lately enjoying the process of 3d printing and and learning how to design things like right now i'm working on a case specifically mm -hmm. for my BattleTech miniatures to transport them a very customized case that only i will have and if somebody wants to buy it off me i will probably just be like okay cool you can buy the sp uh, you know you can you buy the 3d files off of me for 50 bucks a piece, you know 50 yeah. bucks you know what i mean like so you're paying 50 dollars for this cad file but you can print as much of them as you mm -hmm. can, right but i would only sell them specific ones to build the specific case because the way i'm setting it up is you can customize it to build whatever you want yeah so the, there's uh, a lot you can do with it yeah and so that's the when i you know when um i will say this um the entry cost was lower than I expected. So for the for the Mono Two, the printer, or sorry, the the dryer cure or the holy shit, the cure wash station, cure wash station, and a container of like a one kilogram container of gray was like five hundred bucks. Now that's not that's not small beans. Let's be clear on that, but it's a lot lower than I expected. So that's what three models three model kits pretty much right so what i have here i have the same amount in 3d printing and then i have a 300 dollars fdm printer mm -hmm. plus i have all the other stuff that goes along with it right but the money that i save versus going in like wargaming terrain is uh -huh just as expensive if not more expensive than some of the miniatures right mm -hmm. like you go in you buy a terrain set it's going to cost you like four or five hundred bucks yeah. for like a small piece of like you know like mm -hmm. it, it, a table's worth of terrain on average if you were to buy it all yourself go to the store and buy it all yourself is about 800 bucks jesus christ depending on the level of terrain like if you're going to buy games workshop terrain Mm -hmm. and you buy those terrain kits and you build up with those terrain kits you're looking to six to eight hundred bucks in today's money jesus right whereas i've spent so far on battletech terrain i have terrain for warhammer you know it takes a long time to print it because i don't have my fdm printer set up to print high speed right. which i can easily do because i'm learning how to do that that's the next step for me is learning how to make my printer print in higher speeds which mm -hmm. i can which will take the print time down and i can do larger projects cost per print is low it's yep. at the time yeah you know, I've, I've had you know a couple things you know i'm trying to get as, as clean as possible it's like a four a four hour print for one thing but you set up and you fucking walk away beautiful isn't it one of the next tools that i want for my arsenal is, is there, actually is a scanner I'd is uh, the one I'm looking at is a tabletop scanner, but the reason why I want the tabletop scanner is because it can do down to point, uh, point one. So it's for it's like point one zero microns. Yeah. So it's um, one tenth of a millimeter. There are times that you might need a piece. You might have to replicate a piece. 
but instead of designing it from scratch to be able to scan it would be yeah you could do that or you could uh take like say for in my world i could take a miniature and then scan a portion of that miniature and then mm -hmm. create like an exhaust blast that comes out of it out of its jump jets or you mm -hmm. know uh, right some so gun yeah, fire, so you can add on to yeah add on to it or um i could take uh an arm that's on it and then just redesign that arm a little bit or reposition that arm a little bit because I've got that 3D scan and then I've got this custom arm piece. Yes, it's based mm -hmm. on something that already exists, but it's you know gonna cost me a whole lot less than chopping the plastic arm off and having to go buy another mini and then resize or readjusting it, right? Yeah. Which I could potentially fail at doing, right? It's just a lot easier. It's a different way to get the same thing done. You, Ken, Kenneth Bowman, Ken Bowman, KB. So Anvil of War. So they're not producing anymore. It's just it's just existing content now, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. As far as I know, because I actually I quit. I left yeah. Anvil of War. Uh, I was uh, exhausted, mm -hmm. and at the yeah, point they, in time, we were just kind of doing things. Got stagnant because the uh, other business partner was uh, his life was changing and stuff like that. And yeah, uh, we weren't even living in the same town, so a lot of it was remote. Yeah, so I mean, the, the challenges you face as things grow, things grow and lives change and, and whatnot. But yeah, I've, I've been on, I've been kind of looking at it a bit here and there. So I feel like they haven't produced any new content, but everything that you've done in the past still exists. So there's lots of, there's what, four years of. Anvil of War! There's, the, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, con <laughs> there's a lot of content there to check out. So. Uh, so if you're in a war game, some of it's yeah. really, really bad because but, certain people forgot to white balance the camera. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit happens. But and it's like, oh well, we have to post once a week, so we're gonna post it anyway. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. So Anvil, yeah, just at Anvil of War on uh, on YouTube, Instagram. Were you guys on anywhere else? Facebook. Uh, I don't know. I didn't take care of the social media yeah, stuff. I purely focused on the technical and getting shit done. Gotcha. Now that's that's your that's your kind of your group work. Now solo, you're are you only doing the once a week stream of your painting? Is that all you're kind of doing as far as social right even, now? I don't even do that. Okay. I just whatever I feel like it. All right. So I, you can't, you can't but, find you can't find Ken anywhere. Uh, so I recently started uh, an Instagram account. And oh, you I did? Don't, okay. I don't really properly post. I'm not gonna lie. I I don't really properly post. I don't like put hashtags out on a, on or anything. I'm just kind of doing it for fun, kind of dipping my feet in the water. Because bear in mm -hmm. mind, I went like gung ho, yeah, social media fiend for years, posting weekly about. Warhammer, so I'm like, I don't want to do anything that puts a lot of pressure on me because no, I get that. Why I started resenting the whole process of miniature war painting and stuff like that mm -hmm. was because I had to, because I had to, do that. had to, yeah, right. So I have another uh, Instagram account. It's called Riot Charged Games. Riot Charged Games? No, Riot Charge Games, all one word. Okay. And so far, it's just a picture of my dopey face and <laughs> a few of the mechs that I've painted. I think there's four um, things. I do have a YouTube channel under Riot Charge Games, okay. um, but I haven't posted anything to it because I haven't been doing any uh, streaming. It's Right now, it's got a lot of uh, video game stuff on it. Right. Um, I've been thinking about... So I retired from film. And I gave mm -hmm. all of my equipment away. My son decided to take up my my reins, so I, I, here, I can take it. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything left. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm literally relying on laptops and cell phones. So, well, so I do. I, 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 like, I, like I told you, I do everything on my phone. Everything on my phone. But I'm anal, and I'm used to, you know, I'm used to to like like a camera camera mm -hmm. i will and i do plan on painting or or recording some stuff and and posting it onto that youtube channel but so far right now it's just a bunch of old game stuff that i used right. to stream it's just it's been a long process and i work a lot and i you know it's yeah just that's the that's the thing you because you're i'm in i'm in renovations and you're in concrete so i can I can end my like when I'm like you know no screw it guys it's three thirty I'm done you're kind of stuck on site until yeah I don't have a choice I work twelve yeah. hour days some days 
it doesn't bother me. It's good money. But at the same point in time, I, uh, you know, I have a certain amount of time and a certain amount of energy at home. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of things that I do. I 3D print. I play miniature war games. I have, you know, elderly parents I have to take care of. I have other things that I have to take care of, right? So mm -hmm. life is pretty busy for me, even though it's probably the quietest it's my life been. has been. <laughs> it's probably the quietest my life has been in a long time, right? So it's just going to take a matter of me getting bored one day and be like, oh, I have a few extra hundred bucks. Let me go get a streaming card for my laptop and I'll just get all this set up and I'll just keep right, it set yeah. up and then it'll just be like, hey, Ken's streaming again. You know what I mean? So I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. It's mm -hmm. been it's been a plan in my head for a long time. I just one I'm one of those people sometimes that takes me a while to pull the trigger on yeah. certain decisions. Maybe this will be the inspirational topic for me. To Maybe, it will. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. This will be the to, motivation I need to. to but it's, get it's going. a thing, like I said, you because you got you got so many existing models. Like I said, you could just well, and that's third, all do, I took your do, advice. Do, 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 do a 30 second run on the uh on the on the turntable and just show off what you've already done you see i have to get a new new turntable all that stuff is still in yeah that stuff is still property of Envelope of war so right. i like i have a glass one but mm -hmm. i don't really i have a limited space where i'm working yeah uh, so for me to have a photo booth and set it up and do a spin it's a little bit more complicated I, than I get that. Uh, did not. But like eventually it's gonna happen. Because I, mm -hmm. I can it's not hard to acquire the materials for it and I know how to build a photo booth. It's not really all that complicated. Yeah. I just have to do it. Right. <laughs> and it's funny enough, I don't have an iPhone, I have an Android. Oh well there's your if problem right I, there. No, there's <laughs> uh if I were to get into like really nice photography of minis i would i would probably actually get another digital slr yes yeah um with a very nice macro lens on it because you're you have you to do the really good photo you, gotta, you want you, yeah, you do I the games to. workshop quality photos you know you should yeah do that i actually to. i need to get a get a get a good dslr to do do model making photography because right now i just do it with the iphone it comes out all right but i mean like to have a bit more control like you don't need a Sony A, you don't need a two thousand dollar camera to do it. You can get like a an older Canon or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. it's 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 a matter of it's lighting it. Oh, and, yeah. and here's the okay. So it's, this is something I want to talk about too. With model making, a lot of the major differences in painting in model making, you're not painting for lighting. Yeah, you're painting to be so lit. That, to, you're painting it to be lit. Yeah. Whereas with miniature painting, you're you are painting the lighting onto the object. Yep. Right. So that is another huge difference. So like I'll use layering techniques to light to make midtones and highlights, whereas you might not necessarily do that because yeah. you're planning on having, you know, uh, fiber optic lighting on the inside of it. Mm -hmm. And then you're probably going to put it in some kind of, kind of encasement that lights it from the top yeah, exactly. whatever, to act yeah, like so, a sun. Yeah, exactly. So I have control over my environment. As it yeah. Were. Whereas I'm putting the control, I'm telling the person, okay, well, this is where the light is coming from. You know, after after working with working with working as a team for so long, I'm rebuilding my own thing, the yeah. way I would like to do it. Um, well, that's it's that... my own personal purposes, and mm -hmm. it's it's not for any monetary gain. It's just because it's like I it's like here I am. This is what I like to do. Well, that's why and, I switch. I've I've kind of got it kind of gone right into the model making thing because i don't have to depend on anyone else i mean except for podcasts or talking to someone but i don't have to depend on anyone else yeah, to you're accomplish just, you're doing your own thing it's me. simple you do it when you want to and have the time and you can be creative and do what, what you need to do yeah you're doing what you love man and that's the yeah, thing exactly. i lost my passion for filmmaking because of a couple of events in my life and 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 i was doing it so much and i just got tired yeah. of chasing the money and I yeah, lost my passion uh, for it. So honestly, if I do it in a small way, it'll literally just be, you know, for my own social media purposes and stuff like that, just yeah. to enjoy it. And so maybe somebody else can enjoy it if they want to get into it or are curious about it or whatever. Customizing your minis is, is a topic on its own. Models, mm -hmm. minis, whatever it is. Like we call it in a, in, in a miniature wargaming, we call it kit bashing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But yeah. it's it's um 
and, and I think it's a pretty universal term, but you know, if there's something that you want that isn't made by the company that um, uh, you are looking at purchasing mm-hmm. from, your option is the kit bash, right? And 3D printing is an amazing way to augment your kit bashing arsenal yes. because you can, you know, if you can't find a way to produce it, you can just 3D print a way to produce it, or you can augment your kit bash with 3D printed parts so that it works a lot better than having to spend hours with green stuff and, and epoxy resins and st- stuff like that to, to, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm hoping to I'm hoping to have you back. You know, hopefully more than once. Like you know, every every now and again, just come back and we'll talk about a. Well, we'll narrow it down to one subject moving forward, and just fucking chat about that. And because I don't have a co-host, I'd like to kind of have people who just kind of come in and out regularly. Yeah, man. No worries. It's all cool. good. Cool. Um, Chill. So, um, Kenny, Ken, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. <laughs> Take good care of yourself. Uh, but yeah, seriously, thanks for making the time. And okay. uh, always good to nerd out. Yeah, exactly. And we will catch you another time. On the other side of the star view. Quite literally, because that's about what I've been That's what you're going to play. <laughs>